So I've been told now, I've gotten the official word from Laura Hunt Foti, our amazing Zoom technician, that we can start our evening. So a couple of things to remember. Um, make sure you keep yourself muted and keep your camera off during the performance. And after our performance, we are going to have a, a wonderful Q&A with our fantastic director, Joe Ackman, who's going to narrate that for us, going to moderate that. And uh, we are here tonight because we're going to read an amazing play written by the one and only fantastic Scott Mullen, which is called Carl Flunt Would Protect You From Trucks. So without further ado, we will begin. I will be your narrator just to let you know that. So here we go. Scene one. Beth is seated on a bench with a book. She looks to the right as if waiting for someone. She shifts her legs, nervous. Coming out behind her is Liz. She stands watching Beth. Entering from one side is Tommy, carrying a gym bag, crossing in front of the bench. Beth sits up, stiff, self-conscious. She gives Tommy a shy smile. He gives her a grin. She exits on the other side of the stage. He's gone. I forgot how cute he was. Beth flinches. Liz sits down next to Beth and openly stares at her. Hi, Beth. Do I know you? You do. Look close. I don't look closer. Are you a friend of my mom's? I was trying to figure out how to say this and I decided I'm, I'm just going to tell you. Tell me what? I'm you. What? Yeah, grown up, from the future. That's not a thing. Yeah, and yet, here I am. <laughs> this is weird. No, um, I need to go home. She starts to rise. Liz grabs her wrist. I found you because you come here all the time after school, just for the quiet and the shade. Plus, after soccer practice, Tommy Andrews walks by so he can go to the convenience store to get a Gatorade. But 15 minutes later, he walks back, and you're too shy to talk to him, but usually... He smiles at you and that makes your day. How do you know that? Because I'm you. I sat here. I looked at Tommy Andrews a lot. I used to pretend that Tommy and me were- No, stop, stop. Uh, no, this is nuts. She pulls away from Liz, but doesn't leave. Instead, she stares at Liz. You see it now, don't you? I don't know. How can I prove it to you? Besides trying to remember all of our Tommy Andrews fantasies. No, uh, uh, take off your right shoe. What? I want to see your foot. Liz pulls off her shoe and sock. She's wearing one. Show me the bottom. If you're me, you'll have a scar and a birthmark. Oh. Liz lifts her foot to show Beth the bottom. Beth stares. This is impossible. Call me Liz. When did I become a Liz? Seriously? I was Beth, then Eliza, then Lizbeth, then Lizzie with a Y, then Lizzie with an I-E, then Liz. I look terrible. Yeah, it's not working out. You need to make better choices. Me? Yes. It's too late for me. That's why I'm here. So we can start over. You might want to start taking notes. I'm not taking any notes. Okay, well, at least mental notes. Pay attention, please. It's important. Fine. Say what you need to say. Okay. First of all, Seth Gilbert. Wait, is this about boys? My life is not about boys. Good. That's a great attitude. Embrace that, okay? And we'll get to the other stuff eventually, but first, Seth Gilbert. Write his name on your brain. If you hear it, you run. It won't be for a while, but it is so, so important. Seth Gilbert, run. Say it. Seth Gilbert, run. Good. You could kick him in the crotch if the opportunity presents itself. Just saying, just Seth Gilbert, kick him in the crotch. I'm leaving. Oh, no, you need, to, you need to listen. You need to know all about the other boys that you need to avoid. Liz pulls a folded list from her pocket. She unfolds it. It's long, really long. You must be joking. This is the order of when it happened as, as close as I can remember. Just say no to all of them. Okay, Mike Squires. Mike Squires, he doesn't even know I exist. Oh, he will, soon. But just ignore him. Johnny Rupp, Eddie Franco, Todd Kramer, Miles Henderson, Jordan Melman, Ricky Diaz. Oh, I'm gonna date all these guys? No, you are going to avoid all these guys. <laughs> but these are guys that we um, kissed? Uh, some more than that. Ew! Good, yes, that is the right attitude. Stop, T time out. What? I've still never been kissed. 
wow, that's right. Uh, you were, we were a little slow, but then we blossomed and that is coming soon. <laughs> Boys are going to be all over you. They will. Do not get excited. It will seem amazing, but it's really not at all. Okay. Pay attention. Norman Hertzfeld, um, Harry Johnstone, some guy named Ramon with the Lamborghini. Wait, you dated a guy whose last name you didn't know? He had a Lamborghini. Seriously? Hey, can I continue? No, 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 wait, why can't I make my own bad life choices? Uh, because they affect my life. Well, that sounds a little selfish. I mean, what about my needs? I am you. Like, can't you tell me other things about the future, bigger things about the world? No, that's not allowed. Basically, I can just tell you about boys. That's insane. Well, that's the rules. I'm never going to remember all these names. Just take the whole list. Beth takes it, looks at it. Did we really kiss all these boys? We did. That's a lot of frogs. It really was. And no prince? No. Well, what about Tommy Andrews? Mm, way out of our league. What happens to him? I have no idea. Did he become a famous soccer star? Is that a thing? So who should I go out with? Oh, that's why I'm here. Okay, it's really important. You need, you need to trust me on this, really. Okay, ready? Carl Flunt. Carl Flunt? No. No, 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 no. No, he's going to get really rich. I don't care about that. Really, really rich. Okay, there's nothing interesting about Carl Flunt. I could never see myself loving Carl Flunt. Love, forget about love. Love is a trap. Love does not exist. Go for the cash. That's why I came back. You need to snap up Carl Flunt. Carl Flunt is weird, and not weird in a smart nerd way. I like smart nerds. He's weird in a weird way. No, look, okay, if you avoid all the boys on that list, maybe it'll make me an emotionally healthy person who's ready for love when it comes along, but it would, it would be so much easier if you would just marry Carl Flunt. I mean, not now, like in five or six years before he meets Marianne Flugel. I'm not marrying Carl Flunt. Tell me about the other stuff. I, do you have a job? I, I work for Crinotech in HR. What's that? Um, I deal with employee stuff. Oh, r really? Does that makes you happy? No. That's why I came back here in one of their time machines secretly. Didn't I go to college? You did. Waste of time. And I didn't become a cellist? Seriously? Yes. No. I've been playing the cello for eight years. I'm cello girl. You hate the cello. I don't hate the cello. You, you just don't want to tell mom you want to quit because then she'll... You know, she'll get that look on her face. Well, she got the look when I stopped playing cello in about six months, maybe a year. You should do it now, though. I mean, just save us some time. Well, I figured that was my fallback career. I could mm, play in an orchestra or something. Ew, no. Moving on from the cello was the best thing we ever did. So what am I supposed to do? Mary Carl. No, no, no. For a career, for a life to be happy. I mean, isn't that important? I guess. Um, okay, fine. What do you want to do? What are you passionate about? You don't remember? It's all a blur. How can it be a blur? You're only, what, 40? Hey, I'm 27. What? I'm going to look that old that fast? Look, don't blame me. Blame you. Well, do you s smoke? Drink? Yeah. Well, stop doing both those things. You, you stop doing it. I'm not smoking or drinking. Oh, you will. How did I become you? I don't want to be you. Good, good. Who do you want to be? And don't, don't say somebody who wants to play the cello. I don't know. You need to figure it out. Okay, well, maybe um, I want to write. No, no, that sounds boring. We'll be poor. It's not all about money. Oh, sure. You say that now. Mom and dad are paying the rent. That won't last. Do you like ramen? Not really. Well, being poor means eating ramen. You... You want to write, Mary Carl Flunt? Mm. Then you can sit home all day and write, and we'll, we'll have a cook, and they can cook us whatever we want. I'm not marrying Carl Flunt. Well, don't make me punch you. I, when I woke up this morning, all I cared about was passing a quiz in history and maybe getting my daily smile from Tommy Andrews. And now suddenly I have to make major choices about my life and cello and, and what, and, and I'm never going to find love? You're making me sad. Maybe... Maybe I'll become a nun. No, don't do that. Don't forget it. It's done. I'm becoming a nun. 
Sister Betty enters, zen and peaceful. She sits on the other side of Beth. Whoa. Hey, my name is Sister Betty. Do you want to see my foot? Sister Betty shows Beth the bottom of her right foot. It's us. This is impossible. I'm from the future timeline in which you become a nun. This is a real turning point in our life. Choices will be made today that decide the future is real and which one collapses. Well, are you happy being a nun? It's not about being happy, but I'm content. Do you play the cello? Oh no, we hated the cello. But it's a good life. We have butterflies in the garden. There's a little squirrel that comes out and I feed it nuts. Okay, she's high. High on life <laughs> and God. And some Pepsi I drink in the time machine. I am buzzed on sugar. Okay, is this who you want to be? She seems pretty mellow. The quiet life of <sighs> devotion and wonder. Wait, how did you get back here? I mean, this me works for some time machine company and stole a ride or something. Vinny de Post to let me into the room. He's on the list. But uh, you're a nun, so. Oh, the, the, the convent has a time machine. We use it for fighting Satan. Whoa, that's kind of cool. I could do that, maybe. Um, I mean, do you use nunchucks? Nunchucks. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, I don't fight Satan. That's Sister Bertha. She was an MMA fighter before she came to God. So why are you here? Oh, you left me a note. You wrote it on the back of the list of boys we never fold around with. Sister Betty pulls out a battered version of Liz's list, unfolds it. Dear future me who is a nun, someday come back to the day the other future me showed up, show me your foot, and tell me how the nun thing worked out. It worked out pretty well. Beth gives her a long look. There must be other choices. Carl Flunt! No, I'm not going to marry Carl Flunt. I'm going to be a writer. Where's the me from that future? Uh, I want to be a writer. Come out and talk to me. They look around. Nothing. Hello? Where are you? Maybe writer you gets hit by a truck. No! Carl Flunt would protect you from trucks. Enough with Carl Flunt. Maybe, maybe writer me is so happy in the future that they didn't want to come back. You, you think they'd want to come back and tell you? Maybe they don't have a time machine. Well, that's plausible. Sometimes ducks land on the lily pod behind the convent. Okay, I've decided I'm not going to be a nun. Beth and Liz look at Sister Betty. I'm still here. Weird. And I'm not going to marry Carl Flunt. Mistake! No, I am going to be a writer. Even if it means I get hit by a truck. So, if it makes you feel any better, I'm not going to date any of these guys. Yay. Maybe you want to rethink that. What? It got a little lonely turning down everyone. I've still never been kissed. Well, that's no good. Hey, pick three guys from this list. Nice guys with soft lips. I'm telling you, it's Carl. Let it go. Fine, fine. Ah, uh, Johnny, Jordan, and Ricky. Maybe I'll say hi to Tommy Andrews next time he walks by. I told you, he's out of our league. Well, did you ever try? No. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe if I talk to him, it'll, it'll be a good thing. It'll be a great thing. It'll change everything. Oh, where's the me married to Tommy? Come out. They look around. Damn it. Carl Blunt. Oh, I, I'm going to wait here for Tommy Andrews and we're going to chat. Then he'll be back any second. So I need you to leave now. I, I'm not going to be either of you. I'm sorry. I, I guess you'll both just Spanish or something? I guess. Probably. But I'll try to make it all work. And it's been real. Thanks, I guess. They look at each other awkwardly. We're still here. I guess changing your future takes a while. I'm, I'm sure we'll vanish any second. They wait. At any second. Nothing. I guess we get to hang out. Oh, well, not here. What do you want to do? Well, let's find Carl Flint. No! He is your destiny. I'm telling you, embrace it. I'm not going out with Carl Flint. Well, we'll see. Come on, nun. Liz and Sister Betty head off stage. Beth watches them leave. She sits, looks right, checks her watch, jumps up, then paces nervously. Okay. Hi, I'm Beth. How are you? No, that's awful. God, I shouldn't talk to him. Tommy Andrews doesn't care about me. Unless he does. No, he doesn't. But, but maybe he's my future. But, but they didn't even remember him. What does that mean? I mean, 
and I'm not going to be a cellist. Well, maybe that's a good thing. God, I need to stop thinking so much. Oh crap. Okay. There he is. Tommy wanders in with his duffel bag in one hand, Gatorade in the other. He smiles at Beth who freezes as Tommy walks right past her. Uh, no, no, I'm doing this. Okay. She runs ahead of him and stands in Tommy's way. Uh, hi. I need to talk to you. Okay. Do you know who I am? Tommy looks her up and down, tilts his head. No. Seriously? Do you go to my school? I'm cello girl. I don't know what that means. I play the cello. Oh. We both had Mr. Harmon for third grade, Mrs. Sosa for fifth grade. In middle school, we had eighth grade English together, and then 10th and then grade Spanish. Mrs. Lopez, remember, I sat two desks to your left near the window. That's very specific. One time during a quiz, your pen ran out of ink and I gave you one of mine. Did I give it back? You did. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and your name is? Beth. Wait, did you, you used to have pigtails? No, never. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember you. You smile at me. What? Every day I sit right here on this bench reading and you walk past and, and you smile at me. Oh, I smile at everyone. Oh. I mean, someone once told me I had a great smile. You do. And, and that a smile is someone, something I could give to everyone. Oh. Uh, I, I really need to go home. Um, take care, Beth. He moves past her. Beth almost lets him go, then sighs and chases after him again. Oh, wait, oh, no, I really do need to talk to you. Can you give me five minutes? Five minutes. It could be the most important five minutes of our lives. Oh, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I can't tell you what happened today because you'll think I'm crazy. I think I'm crazy. But, but let's just say that I started thinking about the future and all the possible futures looming in front of us and all the various options and choices we have that will define our whole lives, everything we do and everything we don't do. And every day I sit here and I watch you walk past and smile at me and it makes me happy. But, but if I never talk to you about that, if I never talk to you about anything, then all of the infinite futures we each have, none of them will intersect because, because they won't. Do you know what I mean? Maybe? God, I mean, I'm rambling. I know I'm rambling. And you're probably thinking, five minutes. I can't believe I promised this girl five minutes. I need to get out of here now. But I'm not a rambler. I mean, I'm not. It's just because I'm nervous because I'm talking to you. You, you, don't need, you don't need to be afraid of me. No, no, no. Just, 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 just wait. I need to get through this. Okay, so, so normally I'm shy and I don't talk that much. But maybe I should. So I am. And wow, this is all coming across nutty. But maybe that's good because you'll never forget this ever. Will you? I mean, I mean I've definitely made an impression. You definitely have. <laughs> but it's not the impression I wanted to make. It's not. I mean, this isn't me, this nervous, rambling person. But, but who am I? I mean, I, okay, I never really thought about that until today. But now it's just like it, it all just like dropped on me. This like crazy, wait, what am I going to do with my life? Apparently I'm not really cello girl. Kind of need to breathe. Beth sits on the bench, tries to breathe. I mean, I could get some boring job somewhere. I've already forgotten what job she said she had. Who? Or I could be a nun, but wow, if there was ever any part of me that wanted to be a nun, I think that choice is a no now. I mean, if you'd have seen her, <laughs> that was me. Uh, I can't believe wait, that was nun? me. Yeah, I mean, I know, right? But, but okay, but then who am I? What's my passion? I thought it was cello, but let's be honest, she's right. I, I was just making my mother happy. I mean, maybe I'm passionate about writing, but do people really pursue their passions? I have no idea what my parents' passions are. They don't seem to be passionate about anything, but oh, what about you? I mean, do you think about the future? What are you passionate about? That, that's silly, I know, you love soccer. I mean, do you think you'll play professionally? I'm gonna be a doctor. What? Yeah, that's what I wanna do. I wanna help people. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I like soccer, and if I can get a soccer scholarship to a good college, that would be Awesome, <laughs> because the better undergraduate degree, the better medical school, you know? Yeah, sure. Well, I work weekends at the hospital as a candy striper, and, and everything I see there, everything I experience, it just makes me want to do it more. But 
I like to do the whole thing, Doctors Without Borders and helping out in poor areas. I'm hoping to graduate from high school early just to get it all started faster. I'm going to take summer classes. You really are out of my league. What? Nothing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't usually ramble either. It's just that people usually aren't that interested. You seem interested. I am. So you want to be a writer? I guess. Maybe. You should have some idea. You're going to be going to college soon. I just sort of thought I'd figure it out. But, um, writing. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard to make a living as a writer. You're going to wind up with some crappy real job and wishing you'd gone to college for a career. You should go to law school. What? Sure. Law degree gives you lots of flexibility. No, I really don't want to be a lawyer. Well, I mean, sometimes you need to be realistic. Just picture yourself as a lawyer. Beth looks around. Who are you looking for? Uh, never mind. <laughs> Nothing, this day is giving me a headache. Silence, long enough to be awkward. Well, <laughs> your five minutes are up. I really need to get home. Anything else? Beth hesitates, then chickens out. I guess that's it. I'll see you around. <laughs> he heads off. Beth takes a step after him and then lets him go. She sits on the bench, leans her head back, closes her eyes, and groans. Why didn't I kiss him? Blackout. Scene two. Liz and Sister Betty come in on the side of the stage. Liz stops. Did you feel that? What? Liz think, rips her lips. I think Beth is thinking about kissing boys. I don't even know what that feels like. Wait. I am getting something. Sister Betty licks her lips too. I'm not sure, what, what does it feel like? I cannot believe you're me. Lights come up on Carl Flint, <gasps> who sits at a small cafe table reading a book. There he is, Carl Flint. He doesn't look weird. You don't remember him at all? Not really. They observe him. He's not bad looking. Ew. You're supposed to be me. We're supposed to have the same taste. Well, I have been in a convent. There aren't many men there. Ah, say no more. Except Juan Carlo. He comes once a month to trim the hedges. Sometimes when it's hot, he takes off his shirt. Well, look at you. <laughs> Did you ever, you know, behind the hedges? With Juan Carlo? Yeah, with Juan Carlo. Absolutely not. That would be a sin. Well, it depends if you're doing it, right? Well, he would never. He's married. Oh, sister, not a deal breaker. He has five children. Oh, okay. Um, maybe you shouldn't mess with them. Eleven grandchildren. Wait, what? Fourteen great-grandchildren. Okay. How old is Juan Carlo? I believe he is 87. 87? Yes. Why are you looking at him with his shirt off? I'm in a convent. No wonder Carl Flunt looks good. I may not be the best judge of men anymore. Hmm. Okay, maybe if we clean him up, some nice clothes, better haircut. I could see that. Or get him to grow it out so I can run my fingers through it. Liz looks at her. When was the last time you touched a man? Never. You better let me take the lead here. Liz and Sister Betty move toward Carl, who still hasn't registered their presence at all. How does he get rich? Oh, uh, some computer tech company thing. I don't know, but he's going to be loaded. Liz abruptly sits next to him. Sister Betty lurks in the background. Hey, Carl. Carl looks at her. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be around, so I'm going to cut to the chase. There's a girl named Beth Morgan. I think you two would really hit it off. Beth Morgan? Yes. I, I don't know her. You do. She's in your school. What does she look like? Well, sort of like me, but like 10 years younger. So she's like 30? What? I am not 40 years old. Is she a teacher? I mean, do you want me to go out with a teacher? Okay, she's not a teacher. She's a girl. She's your age. I don't know her. I think you'd be really good together. Does she like microwave ovens? Uh, what? I'm really getting into microwave ovens, taking them apart 
and then putting them back together again, trying to make them cook even faster, uh, wouldn't it be amazing if, if we were able to put something in there, press a button, and it gets instantly hot in like two seconds, no waiting. You can't wait one minute. Time is money. This is going to be huge. I don't think instant microwave ovens is how you make your fortune. Okay, don't tell anyone because it is top secret. Okay, trust me when I tell you, it's not always about speed, especially with the ladies. <laughs> what? There's a nun watching us. Oh, yeah, she's with me. Nuns terrify me. Seriously? Ser Just don't let her hurt me. Sister Betty approaches. I mean you no harm. Carl hides behind Liz. Shh, it's okay. Uh, your eyes are kind. <laughs> I can see you are a gentle soul. Can I touch you? Oh, certainly. No, no touching. No, it's good that he wants to touch me, given the situation. No. No, he's what not situation? for you. He's not for you, okay? He's at least not the nun you, Artie Cooper. What? Wait, wait, what's going on? When was the last time you went to church? It's been a while. We are not doing this now. A little spirituality might help him be a better man for us. I don't want him to be a priest. I just want him to shower more often. I shower? What? Uh, listen, you need, you need to ask out Beth Morgan. You need to take her someplace nice. You need to woo her, okay? It's, here's 50 bucks. Liz fishes some cash out of her pocket and slips it to Carl. Are you bribing him to take her out? It's just subsidizing the date. Okay. There's more where this comes from if you behave yourself. You look where that came from. We could vanish in any second. Shh, shh. Well, what do you mean if I behave myself? I mean, what, what can I do? I mean, Just don't be expecting her to put out. Not yet. She's off men for a while. Beth is not the type that is going to put out. Oh, trust me. We put out way too much. I've never put out in my life. That's because you're virgin future. She's not picking virgin future. She still might. Okay. She is not putting out with you. Okay, get that out of your head right now. Putting out on the first date or, or the second date or the third date. Just, it, it just causes problems. Okay, maybe you should just be a gentleman. She might, she might respect that. Did you respect that? You might have a point. Maybe you should wait until you're married. The girls scare me. Oh, great. Oh, I, I do date. Do you? No. You may want to start taking notes. Okay, who are you people? We are interested parties. Just shut up. Now, here's the deal. Beth likes Italian food. Oh, yeah. Yeah, take her out to dinner or someplace with a nice lasagna. Uh, maybe that place over by the freeway. What's that place called? Well, I don't think I ever went there. Didn't anybody ever take you to dinner? No. Oh, okay. We'll go there later if we're still around, okay? It's a date. No, it's not a date. Don't make it weird. Okay, Carl. This is what you need to do. Compliment Beth. Tell her she has nice eyes. What color are her eyes? Just like mine. So sort of uh, muddy. Just try to be poetic. Okay. Tell her her eyes are like mysterious pools that you could fall into. Hey, that's not bad. Mysterious pools? You're or? supposed to be writing this down. I dream of Juan Carlos saying that to me. Okay, you need to stop. Pay attention to Beth. See what she put on special for you. See if she's wearing perfume. Oh, I remember perfume. Tell her she smells nice. Tell her if she's wearing her Doc Martens. Tell her you love her shoes. Tell her you love her shoes anyway, okay? Just let her talk. Let her talk about her life. Show an interest in what she's saying. Bring up uh, grandparents. Hopefully she'll tell you the story about Papa Don. The one about the bear. She loves that story. She wants to be a writer. Just encourage that. Tell her... But when you get married, you'll let her write as much as you want. Married? Yes, pay attention. You've really never dated at all? Girls don't see me like that. Um, I was hoping that one day when I'm rich and successful that... It's actually I... a really, really good strategy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but we don't have time for that now, okay? You need to seal the deal with Beth immediately. You just set the groundwork for your whole future together while we're still around to advise you. I see great things for you, Carl Flunt. You're gonna come up with something that makes you rich. Uh, fast microwaves. No, no. Actually, 
don't listen to me. I don't want to push you in any way. I don't want to change. I mean, do, do your microwave thing. See where it leads because somewhere down the line, you're going to do something cool. I just don't, don't lose that. Okay, but don't babble about it too much. You don't want to bore Beth. But don't I want a wife who won't be bored by what I do? She's cute. She can cook a bit. I don't care about cute. I don't care about cooking. I want a wife who gets me, uh, who takes an interest in what I do, encourages me. Yes. You think that's Beth? Sure. I'm interested. Why wouldn't she be? Well, you're easy. You haven't talked to a man in 20 years. I think Beth will surprise you. Maybe you've lost that part of you, but Beth hasn't. Not yet. Take her out to dinner. You be yourself. No. Yes, completely yourself. Let her see it all because that's the only relationship. That's, that's the only marriage that's ever going to work. This is that the plan. This should be the plan. Isn't that what you want for Beth? Happiness, good choices? I was thinking more like a BMW and a house on the beach. Aim higher. Take Beth to dinner. Be yourself, warts and all. I don't have warts. It's an expression. Be you. I, I don't know. I mean, that, that might scare her off. But... Then be the you you want to be. You really think she'll like me? I mean, what if she doesn't really see the potential in me? Oh, she knows about the potential. All we can do is try. Listen, hypothetical question. Beth is walking in the middle of the road. What? Why would she be walking in the middle of the road? I don't know. Maybe she's running over to see you. Maybe she's excited that you're there. Um, okay? Well, that's oh. nice. Okay, but a truck is coming. Oh, no. I see where you're going with this. Okay. Would you save her from that truck? Would you lunge into the road and push her to safety? even if it meant risking your own life. Liz and Sister Betty leaned forward, waiting for his answer. I like to think so. Ha! Huh. I told you, I told her you would. That's something to build a relationship on. Is it? There are worse things. This is what I want you to do, okay? Clean yourself up, take a shower, put on a little cologne, not too much, some aftershave, just then meet Beth at the beach. Five o'clock sharp. I, I don't know. Trust I, me. Worst comes to worst. You spend some time talking to a girl. The next time will be easier. Well, I guess that makes sense. Okay, but I have a good feeling about this girl. Where are you meeting her? The beach. Five o'clock. Let's go. We need to go tell Beth before we disappear. Liz heads off. Sister Betty heads after her, then stops. Goes back to Carl. Don't be afraid. She reaches out and touches Carl's face with the back of her hand. Oh. Wow. None! Oh, coming! Sister Betty smiles at Carl, then runs over. Carl just watches her go. Then he sniffs his armpit, makes a face, heads in the other direction. Blackout. Scene three. Beth is still seated on the bench. Elizabeth comes in, eyes her, then sits it's next to Beth, startling her. Ah! Oh, oh, sorry. I'm a little jumpy. It feels like every woman I see is some version of... Um, never mind, but um, you can sit there. Thanks, Beth. Beth eyes her. Oh, no. You're another me, aren't you? You want to see my foot? Oh, I believe you. So, they were here already. Rats. I was trying to beat them, but my time portal opened on the other side of town behind the boathouse. I should have worn better shoes. Why is everyone coming now? I mean, that's just how time travel works. There are only a few days that time portals can open. I, I, I could have come back when we were six, but that might have really messed us up. So what are you here to warn me about? I'm not. I'm here to tell you not to let these women get you into a tailspin. I remember when they visited and it really, really threw me. I, I second guessed myself for years, but I got through it. Okay, we're gonna be okay. Just. Don't do anything crazy. Like talk to Carl Flint. You never talked to Carl Flint? No, I don't even wanna know where that would have gone. Nowhere good though. Huh? I mean, in fact, don't even listen to Liz's advice at all. I didn't. Well, I tried not to be so slutty, but otherwise just keep being you. But who am I? You're you, you're me. You just keep being that, that's all you need to know. Do you play cello? No. <laughs> Waste of time. Did you go to college? We did. Was it fun? It was okay. Just okay? Just okay. 
but, but you're happy, right? I mean, we're happy. We're okay. I don't want to be okay. Sometimes okay is amazing because okay is so much better than awful. Well, tell me you're a writer. I write. Good. Not that I make a living at it or anything. Oh. Novels? One. Wow. Self-published. Oh, no. But I wrote it. And yes, there are two boxes of books in the garage, but it's my book that I wrote. Wait, you have a garage? Yes. And a house? Beautiful house. Okay. Are you married? Yeah. Oh, is he amazing? He's okay. Again, with okay, what does that even mean? He's okay. How can okay be enough? He's much better than the other two. We were married three times? Yes. Children? No. Why not? Do you want children? I think so. The right guy. Yes. I haven't found him yet. You've been married three times? Exactly. Well, how could you marry them if you didn't think they were worth having children with? Yeah, you never really know about someone until you marry them. I mean, people change after they get married. Tell me their names so I don't marry them. No, no, I don't want you to change anything. How can you not want me to change anything? Because there were happy times. How many? Tell me, and be honest, in your whole life so far, how many incredible, drop-dead, super wonderfully happy moments have you had? Elizabeth considers. Counts on her fingers. You can count them on your fingers? Four. That's not enough! That's a lot. Four. In, well, how old are you? I'm 45. You look much better than the other me. See? Good choices. But, but how are you 45 years old and you've only had four wonderfully happy moments in your whole life? It's better than zero. I know people with zero. I want more than four. Four is plenty. No. No, no. How can you be happy with just four? How, how can you be happy with so many unhappy marriages? Her one is okay. How can you be happy with okay? You learn how to settle. Is that really why you came all the way back here? To tell me to settle? What are you afraid of? It could be worse. It could be better. Maybe not for us. How can you say that? Well, some people just aren't destined for those kinds of lives. Well, I don't believe that. We make our own destiny. And what have you been doing about that? I'm still a teenager. Most people, most really successful people knew what they wanted to be by the time they were 10. Some, even by the time they were four. Well, I don't need to be really successful. I, I mean, yes, it's disappointing if I'm 45 and my only book is mostly in a box in my garage. But, but it's a book, right? It is. And if I write one book, I can write one, I can write 10. <laughs> it's not that easy. Well, why not? Why didn't you write 10? Life. Exactly. Oh, that's why I want to change my life. Again, it's not that easy. I don't need it to be easy. Don't you? Don't psychoanalyze me. Okay, you're me. <laughs> I remember being you, not wanting anything, not caring, just sort of skidding toward easy choices, and it worked out. Yeah, we didn't go to the best college, and yeah, I'm not happy at my job, but I'm not miserable. I've never been miserable. Even the divorces weren't miserable. I mean, both times it was just us realizing that we just didn't want to be together. So we split up, signed the papers, easy, painless. There's nothing wrong with painless. How did I get to be you? Okay, maybe coming back here was a mistake. Yeah, you think? Maybe it wasn't, because listen, it's fine if you want to study harder, get in a better school, write more, that's safe. Do that, but no wild changes, no Carl Flunt. That would be a nightmare. How do you know? Can you really imagine being married to Carl Flunt? Having kids with Carl Flunt? No. Of course no, trust me. Look at it this way. You're going to live our life. And yeah, on a scale of one to 10, it might hover around a five. A lot. No big ups and downs, a few tens, but most importantly, not many ones and not many zeros. Don't you want to warn me about the zeros? <laughs> Every life has zeros. You can't avoid them. Just live your life. Live my life. You don't want to be Liz. You look at Liz and you know for her every day is like a two, maybe a three out of ten. 
A life of constant vibes is so much better than that. I'm tired of playing it safe. It don't be. No, I mean, when I think about Tommy Andrews, like, every day I thought it would be the day I talked to him, but it, it never was. And that was safe. That was easy. But because just seeing him smile on your scale of happiness, it was a six, maybe even a seven, but that wasn't enough. I know that now. I don't want sevens. I want tens. I'm going to talk to him again. Mistake. So why? Was he one of your three husbands? No. Did you ever talk to him again after today? It would have been pointless. It would have been a zero moment. I don't care. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be a writer. Fine. Right. If I go back and there are 10 times as many boxes of books in the garage, that is awesome. But we don't need more than that. We don't. I do. Liz and Sister Betty come in. Okay, what is this? Don't listen to her. I don't even want to know what version of us you are. She's been divorced twice. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Well, we can avoid that. She doesn't want me to avoid that. What? What is wrong with you? I'm not talking to you. You're not real. You did your job. She rejected your future. Your empty life of twos and threes. My what? And your creepy nun life. I'm very happy in my creepy nun life, thank you. Okay, this is exhibit A and B. Look at me. This is the life you want. Is that the life you want? No. <laughs> You're making a mistake. Okay, she's meeting Carl Flunt at five o'clock. I am? At the beach. He seems like a nice boy. Don't listen to the nun! Well, I'm not gonna listen to any of you. <laughs> no, you keep telling me what I shouldn't do. What should I do? Marry Carl Flunt! No, forget Carl Flunt just for a second. I'm talking about happiness in general. Deep, personal happiness. What makes you happy? What makes us happy? I don't know. See? Well, you don't know either. You don't, and that's a problem. Gardens make me happy. Hush. Oh, you hush. At least that's something. At least she's happy with the choices she made. Even I don't want her life. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't. It's okay. But as happy as she is when she talks about gardens, I want to be that happy about everything in my life. So I reject your settling. And I really wish you knew more. I really wish you had the answers. I just want you to start wanting more. I can do that. And avoid the boys on the list. Most of the boys. And you really need to meet with Carl Flunt, okay, on the beach. But there's no way that me and Carl Flunt are really going to be a thing. Maybe the beach will help. He's pale. I, the sun could give him some color. The wind blowing through his hair. He's not going to marry Carl Flunt. That looks at her. Okay. I'll meet with him. Oh, you will not. I forbid it. Okay. Elizabeth look. moves towards Beth. Liz blocks her. Oh, you think you can stop me? You're old. So are you. I'm only 27. Yikes. They oh. slap fight. Not particularly well. Okay, okay. This is uh, weird. Elizabeth knocks Liz down. Sits on her. Not bad for an old lady, huh? Sister Betty comes up behind her and squeezes Elizabeth's neck hard. Elizabeth <gasps> collapses. Liz crawls out from under her. What was that? Nerve pinch. Sister Bertha taught me. Okay, we need to get rid of her. Put her through portal. I, I wonder if it's here. She said it was She's... behind the boathouse. Oh, that's not close. We can carry her. What if she wakes up? I'll keep nerve pinching her. Okay. Uh, Beth, go to the beach and see Carl. Just give him a chance, okay? We'll meet you back here at 6 o'clock, if we're still here. Maybe. But just don't you want to expand your possible futures? I'm not sure I need more futures. I mean, why are you still even here? I don't know. Unfinished business. I think we're here because all possibilities exist. Until they don't. That's deep. I'm going to talk to Tommy. Fine. <laughs> Fine, do it. Then, then talk to Carl. His breath smelled nice. He has potential. Just make us proud. I don't know what I'm going to do. But it's fine. Just do it. Beth heads off. Grab Carl's butt for me. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Just go. Beth heads off. Liz and Sister Betty grab Elizabeth's arms and legs. Start carrying slash dragging her off. You never grabbed a butt either? Not a single one. We're going to have to address that. 
and they're gone. Blackout. Scene four. Beth stands in Tommy's yard. She looks at his window, picks up a small rock and throws it up. The sound of the window opening. The window and Tommy aren't seen. It's me. Who are you? It's Beth from the park earlier. Cello girl? Yes, yes. Well, uh, well actually, I guess not, but good enough for now. Can you come down? I'm doing homework. 10 minutes. That seems like a lot. Please? Fine. <sighs> the sound of the window closing. Beth paces in a circle, tense. Tommy comes out. Hey. Hey. <laughs> What's up? I, I guess I... I just wanted to put myself out there. Just wanted to take a chance. Just, just wanted for once in my life to go up to a guy I like and say, hi, I'm Beth, how are you doing today? And it didn't really feel like before in the park was really enough. So, um, hi, I'm Beth, how are you doing today? You like me? I do. Why? I don't know, you're nice. You've always been nice, even if we've never had a conversation. And I watch you with other people, and I can definitely see you as a doctor. And you know, you're, you're cute, so. <laughs> but I can see this isn't working. Finding out I like you isn't really making you happy at all, because you have a plan. And probably a girlfriend, though I've never seen one. There are girls. Of course there are. Uh, you? Boyfriend? <laughs> no. <laughs> What do you say? <laughs> Guys aren't falling all over themselves to ask me out. I don't know why not. You're... Blooming? I've been told. Apparently it's a problem. I don't think so. Half of me wants to run away right now. And the other half? Wants to kiss you. Really? It's been on my wish list. Wow. I wanted my first kiss to be with the right guy. Your first kiss? I probably shouldn't have said that. No, no, it's interesting. I guess this is the new me, the less shy me. The blossoming you. I'm not supposed to be blossoming, though, or kissing. Says who? People. Hmm. It feels like sometimes you should only listen to yourself. Maybe you're right. So what do you say? Will you kiss me? What's in it for me? Kissing. Well, it's not like I haven't kissed girls before. I've kissed too many girls. Look, you need to make it worth my while. You need to, I don't know, give me something. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll let you kiss me if I can grab your breast while we kiss. What? Uh, no. Wait, I'm asking permission like a gentleman. No, that is not a request a gentleman makes. Then $5. $5? Five For the perfect kiss? That's cheap. No, no. Okay. I think your 10 minutes are up. Oh, I still have six minutes. I'm a good kisser. Fine. She digs in her purse. I'm beginning to think you aren't out of my league at all. Good. Yeah, you should have confidence. Confidence is sexy. I don't want to be sexy. Don't you? Beth finds a $5 bill, looks at him. You'd better be amazing. She hands him the money, he tucks it away, she moves toward him and they kiss, and kiss. Beth finally pulls away, Tommy seems a little stunned. Beth doesn't. Wow. Uh. What do you mean, uh? I was expecting fireworks. You didn't get fireworks? No. I got fireworks. You're lying. I haven't got fireworks in a long time. You're a great kisser. I don't even know what I'm doing. You're a natural. I didn't like it. How could you not like it? I don't know. I, I thought you were the one, but it was just sort of nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Maybe you're gay. I think I would know if I were gay. Well, let me try again. You want to kiss me again? <laughs> yes. And give me my $5 back. Tommy hands it over. And another five. Seriously? You need to make it worth my while. Tommy pulls out his wallet, hands over $5. Beth pockets it, then they kiss again. Beth pulls away. I know you felt that. 
It's very disappointing. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. She never said she didn't like kissing. Who? I need to figure stuff out. One more try. No, we're done, Tommy. Wait, we still have two minutes. I waive the two minutes. No! I I'm happy you're going to be a doctor. That's really cool. But you need to stop smiling at me. You have change of a 20? <laughs> go! Go and stop smiling at me. Tommy hesitates, then walks off back into his house. Beth watches him, sighs, walks off. Blackout. Scene five. The faint sound of waves, maybe seagulls. Carl stands there alone, just looking out at the audience. Beth comes in, pulls herself together, walks up to him. Carl? Carl looks at her. I'm Beth. Hi. Thanks for waiting. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, I'm, I've seen you at school. <laughs> yeah. An awkward silence. It stretches. Mm, well, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> well, uh, first thing on your mind, just ask. Are those ladies uh, your aunts or? Oh, um, it's complicated. Okay. <laughs> Silence. They look out. I'm not sure why they wanted us to come to the beach. I mean, I mean, it's nice and everything, looking out at the waves rolling in, but it's not much of a date. Is this a date? What did they tell you? I'm not sure. <laughs> Awkward silence. They watch the waves. Uh, they wanted me to tell you a story about your grandfather, uh, Papa someone. Papa Dan. And a bear. I, I don't think I'm going to tell that story. No? It's a story you tell to friends. Oh. We're not friends. I know. I hardly know you. I hardly know you. <laughs> Silence, and it goes on a little too long. You can go if you want. What? I know you're only here because, well, I don't know why you're here. Uh, I, I know you, but you tried, so I will free from whatever obligation that you think you have. Okay. All right. Beth turns to go, takes a step, and turns back. No. No? No, I'm not giving up this easily. I, I don't know what this is, and maybe it's nothing, but I'm, I'm not going to take the easy way out anymore. Not, not today. You're not. Feels like it's been working for me so far, sort of. Let me ask you something. Do you want to be here? I do. Why? I don't know. I mean, you seem uh, interesting. Do I? Um, do. <laughs> then, then you need to talk to me. It's, I'm just so bad at it. I, I, I mean, sometimes at dinner with my family, no one will say a word and like to the entire meal and they're just eating. And I mean, I guess that's good uh, because sometimes when people, when they're eating, you, um, you can see the food. I mean, that's, that's gross, yeah. I mean, but, but still, I wish someone uh, would just, you know, I just wish sometimes my parents would ask me what I'm thinking, you know, and I guess the problem is that I used to tell them and, um, and they had no idea what I was talking about, so I would just go back to eating. What did you tell them? Science stuff. Ah. Yeah. Silence. But you did a good job there, talking. Say something else. I think I'm empty. Oh, come on. I used up all of my conversation. <laughs> I don't believe you. Carl thinks, shakes his head. I, I've got nothing. Uh, you, you talk for a while. Well, that's not how conversations work. Conversations go back and forth, like, like, like the waves. There's a rhythm. Um, waves are not actually sort of random. They'll come in, you'll think it's steady, then boom, a bigger wave. Well, conversations too, I guess. Maybe. Okay, this is what we'll do. You see that little girl over there running in and out of the water, having fun? Beth points out towards the audience. Carl looks. She is having fun, yeah. Well, whenever, whenever she's in the water, I'll talk. But whenever she's out of the water, you talk. That's random. Okay, ready? <laughs> Okay. Okay, she's in the water and staying in the water. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the future. What would you do if you had some idea of what would happen in the future? What would you... Oh, oh, she's running out. Go. 
Uh, can the future be changed? Beth points. Oh, she's still she's still out of the water. Okay, I mean, if the future can't be changed, then who wants to know what's going to happen? I mean, I mean, talk about a spoiler alert. I I want to live my life in the moment. But if the future can be changed and something bad is going to happen that can can be avoided, then yeah, maybe I I would. Wait, she's in the water. Go. Oh, uh, well, well, I always thought things would happen on their own. I mean, I never thought I had to find my life. I thought my life would just find me, but now I don't know. I mean, I mean, I want to write. I, I think I want to write. I, I get in these moods where I take out a notebook and I just start writing and the stories fly out of me. I mean, I don't know where they come from. Maybe there's an, another me in another universe who's a really great writer and sometimes her stories just leak over. So I always thought that was silly, the idea that there are different versions of you, but well, now I think maybe there are, and that <laughs> we do need to figure out which of those selves we need to be and get, and get the courage to try and grab that future as hard as we can. So, so I've been thinking about a few possible futures and, and all the choices, and now I'm rambling, and why won't that little girl get out of the water? Hey, hey, little girl, get out of the water! Okay, she's running. Uh, you, you scared her. <laughs> she, she's laughing. She is, yeah. She's sitting on the sand. It's your turn. I think it's important that, the, what, that to think about what you want to be and chase that future. I like to invent things. And someday, I'm going to invent something amazing. But so far, all I've invented are, you know, stupid things. <laughs> but, um, so, but if you told me five years ago that the next 10 things I invented would be dumb, uh, I just invent them anyway. So, because every time I fail, I learn something. And someday I'm going to meet a girl who will be as excited about that for me. And the good stuff is that the stuff that sucks, um, but which we have to learn from, and be excited for her. And as long as she's chasing, as she's chasing her passion, as long as she's trying to be the happiest person she can be, I'll support that. And that'll make me happy. That's sweet. On the other side of the stage, Michelle comes out. She stands there looking out at the water, paying no apparent attention to them. I had my first kiss today. You did? Tommy Andrews. Uh, uh, you know him? Of him. Yeah. Is he a good kisser? Not really. Huh. Apparently I am, though. Wow. <laughs> yeah, who knew, right? I mean, I mean, it's sort of encouraging. Like, maybe there are things you can be good at and not even know until you find them. And maybe kissing is just the tip of the iceberg for me. Maybe I'm good at other things. I want to find them all. You? Sure. <laughs> Beth looks at him. So my Papa Dan was out hiking in the woods one day. I don't know why, I guess he liked the woods. I mean, he never took a gun. He didn't want to kill anything. He just wanted to see things and be out there. So one day he's walking and out steps a bear, just standing there, looking at my grandfather. And Papa Dan doesn't want to run. Because, you know. Because bears can run like 30 miles per hour. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And Papa Dan, he cannot run 30 miles an hour. So, so very slowly, he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a jelly donut. Papa Dan loves jelly donuts. And he tore that donut in half as the bear stared at him. And Papa Dan ate half of that jelly donut. And then he tossed the bear the other half, just under him, softly, like this. And the bear caught it. And the bear ate it. And the bear made a happy little noise, like, and the bear walked away. And from that day on, my grandfather carried a jelly donut with him everywhere he went, even, even to church, because he told me there were very few problems that a jelly donut can't get you out of. Hmm. So, did you bring a jelly donut? <laughs> no, I wish I could use a jelly donut right now. Beth notices Michelle, who looks over at them. Michelle then looks out at the water. Be careful, Gracie. Don't go out too far. He's adorable. She's at that age where she can do everything alone, but I think she knows I'm watching just in case. 
Michelle comes closer. Eyes still on where Gracie would be. I like to bring her here. Where we're from, the water isn't this nice, this clean. Plus, this is where my parents met for the first time. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> I mean, they knew each other, sort of. They went to school together, but they never talked. Not until the day they came here. <laughs> she thought he was weird, but this was the day, the big day in their lives when crazy things happened. <laughs> the day that put them both on the path to the lives that they would from then on. My mother still talks about this day all the time. Beth just stares at her. You know what I mean? What are your parents' names? Waldo and Geraldine. Oh, Beth laughs. <laughs> That's a relief. For a moment, I thought... What? Uh, nothing. Actually, my mother's name isn't Geraldine. But it's not? It's Eliza. Beth stares at her, then turns to Carl. Can you get me something from the snack bar? Is everything okay? A jelly donut would be amazing, but I'd settle for a Coke. Okay. Carl looks at Michelle and leaves. What's your father's name? What do you think? It's not Waldo. No. Tell me. My father's name is Carl Flint. Oh my God. It's pretty crazy for me too. <laughs> what are you doing here? I told you, we like coming here. The water in the future is really bad, but this time I decided to come on this day. I'm your mother? You are? <laughs> Can you prove it? I don't have a scar on my foot, if that's what you mean. <laughs> well, how did... You've told me that story a hundred times. All about your crazy future selves. Oh my God, where are they? Are they here? <laughs> They're around somewhere, unless their futures have collapsed. I, I have no idea how this works. And maybe ask Carl, but, except he has no idea that time travel is a thing. Yeah, you never do tell him. What? Yeah, you don't want to freak him out. <laughs> so I marry Carl. You do. And we have kids. Well, me, but I'm not going to tell you anymore. I want you to be surprised. Am I happy? Michelle hesitates. I'm not. I never became a writer. Oh, you're a great writer. So? It's dad. What? He died two days ago in my time to you more than 30 years from now. He died? So you had just seen a movie called Touching Blue. You were crossing a road to get to where you parked the car. A truck ran a red light and it was going to run you over, but dad pushed you to safety. He saved me from a truck? He did. That's insane. But the truck... Oh no. So, I came back today not to tell you anything about your life other than the basics. You are my mother. And on July 27th, 2052, you need to not go see a movie called Touching Blue. Wait to see it on implant. What's an implant? Oh, you'll just have to wait and be surprised. Okay, so what's the date you have to remember? July 27th, 2052. And the movie? Touching blue. You just saved dad. <laughs> Thank you. And he's happy? He, he's rich and successful? Oh, we were never rich. What? <laughs> but... Yeah, I mean, we did okay. We were never hungry, but... You told me that story about your future self wanting to marry him because he was going to be rich. I guess something must have changed when you married him. Maybe he was with you when he would have been in the lab inventing whatever made him a ton of money, but it really, really doesn't matter. Because I can tell you this, for all of my life, until my father died, you were both so happy. So happy. 
and that's my granddaughter. She is. <laughs> that's amazing. She loves her grandma. <laughs> They both stare off at offstage Gracie as Carl walks in with the soda. He eyes Beth and Michelle, trying to figure out their strange chemistry. Beth finally notices him. Um, they didn't have any jelly donuts. Hey, sorry, this is... Uh, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. I'm Beth. This is Carl. Very happy to meet you. <laughs> Carl shakes Michelle's hand. I always liked the name Michelle. Oh, well, maybe you'll name your kid that someday. <laughs> maybe we will. Carl gives her a surprised look. Beth smiles at him. Michelle's eyes track Lizzie. Oh, uh, there it goes. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Take care now. Michelle runs off stage. Beth watches her. Penny, for your thoughts. Just thinking about all the futures out there, how real they are, even if they don't happen. She looks at Carl, then walks up to him, kisses him. They separate. You are a good kisser. You're not bad yourself. No. You have potential. She smiles, blackout. Scene six, Liz and Sister Betty sit on the bench. Sister Betty is in mid-ramble. And do you know what I do then? I can't wait to hear. I take my finger and I poke it into the ground. Poke, poke, poke. I just jam it in there. Just put your finger in the ground. A row of holes a few inches apart and then I plant the seeds. Drop one into each hole and that's a garden. It's a miracle. How are you, me? Sometimes I suck on the finger after. <laughs> Ew! It tastes like life. Did you ever stick your finger in a jelly donut and then put your finger in your mouth? Well, of course. It's just like that, but with dirt. Seriously? Dirt is God's jelly. <sighs> Having no sex makes us weird. Beth comes in and looks at them. I can't believe you're still here. Oh, Sister Betty was just telling me about her garden full of flowers and vegetables. So many cucumbers. Everything I plant dies. Sometimes it just takes practice. So uh, I'm not sure what you've been up to, but um, we felt kissing. Lots of kissing. <laughs> you felt that? OK, that's a little um, embarrassing. Oh, it's just us. How come you didn't tell me we were good kissers? You're not supposed to be kissing anyone. I just met our daughter. What? That's wonderful. I mean, not our daughter, really, since you two don't have kids. You don't, right? Oh, heck no. But she was old, like, like older than you. And, and she had a daughter, a, a pretty little girl. And it's because I married Carl Flint. Yes. But what if I don't marry Carl? No, marry Carl! You should see his mansion. No, no, in our future, there's no mansion. What? Oh, well then, forget it. <laughs> I can't forget it. Apparently, I'm happy with Carl, who is sweet and totally not who I ever saw myself married to, but, but he dies because he saves me from a truck. But I'm going to save him if I actually marry him. But what if I don't? I mean, there's so much responsibility. I, I mean, in your future, did he seem happy? Married to, to what's her name? Marianne Flugel? Yeah, is he happy with Marianne Flugel? Oh, I don't, I don't know. They're rich. Why wouldn't he be happy? Do they have kids? No, I don't think so. So if I let Carl marry Marianne, there's no Michelle? No Gracie? No. Maybe that future is always real. Somewhere. Well, we're still here. And just the fact that I'm talking to a nun version of me who has never existed in the same version of any of my futures means that anything is possible. So don't sweat it. Just be happy. Do you want to date Carl? I mean, I guess I have to. No. No. You don't have to do anything. Strip all that away. 
Think about what you want. What's going to make you happy? And do that. There are a zillion possible versions of your future, a million different kids you can have, a, a million different cute grandkids. Don't obsess about trying to make it perfect. Just try and look for happiness. Stick your finger in the dirt right here. Oh, no. Here we go. You do it, too. Do it. They each press their index finger into the stage as if it's going to the earth. Now smell it. Smell the dirt. This is life. This is experience. This is love. Now suck on your finger. I am not going to suck on my finger. Suck on your finger. Sister Betty pops her finger into her mouth. Beth follows suit. Liz sighs and puts her finger into her mouth. They pull their fingers out. Now go and live your life, Beth. Make good choices, but make your choices. Go. Are you two going to be OK? What's going to happen? I suppose I should get the time machine back to Sister Bertha. Satan never sleeps. Beth looks at Liz. You OK? We're never going to be rich. Anything's possible. Tell me what you're going to do. I'm going to keep seeing Carl Funt, but I think I'll keep my options open and try to figure out what I want. What's going to make me happy? I'll definitely take the list into consideration. Oh, you better take that list into consideration. And, and still, I'm not going to smoke or drink. Well, you can have a little fun. Sometimes we do the hokey pokey at the convent. <laughs> okay, not that much fun. I'm going to try to find a life in which 27-year-old me is truly happy along with 37-year-old me and 47-year-old me, all of them. And I'm going to write. I'm going to be a writer. Good for you. And I'm not going to see Touching Blue in a theater no matter what future I'm in. I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, I have to go meet Carl. We're having dinner. He's going to tell me about his microwave thing, so uh. we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but thanks. Both of you. Beth impulsively hugs them both and leaves. Liz and Sister Betty watch her go, then look at each other. So, I guess that this is it. Oh, I'm in no rush. It's time travel. It's not like I'm going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get into trouble. Like, do you think any of those guys on this list like over those women? Sister Betty? Well, provided that they are over uh, 18 and have had their shots. You know what they say, what happens in the past stays in the past. I don't think they say that. They do now. How about we just go to the bar? That sounds like a start. Mm -hmm. They start heading off. Oh, no hard liquor though. Maybe an iced tea. How about a Long Island iced tea? Oh, that sounds fancy. Uh, Can we go someplace with, a, with bikers? Well, look at you. I've still never been kissed. Or grabbed a butt. Do bikers have nice butts? Oh, they do. Wow. Come on. You want to make some bad choices? I can definitely help with that. The head off Come stage. On. You still owe me lasagna. And they're gone. End of play. <laughs>